Hey guys, welcome to uh, another video. My name is Jason, um, and today we are going to be talking about this book. It is Adrian Goldsworthy's biography of Caesar. I had finished off reading Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, and I hadn't planned to read this book, but it's been sitting on my bookshelf for months now. I bought it at a uh, like secondhand book sale for really cheap, and I plan to read about it. It was one of those books that you know you have on your shelf or on on your TBR list, and you just you're never gonna get around to it. Like you always say, oh yeah, I should read that book, but then you just never do. That's what was kind of happening to this one. I've never read anything on ancient history. And it's one of those things that I want to rectify, but again, I also know that it's tough because I've never read anything on ancient history. I don't have the context, and so everything I learn is I'm ha having to start building that context. And that's much more difficult than if I read something on like the Second World War, where I've read heaps and heaps on it now. So I know what's happening sort of before I read it, but I also, I know other perspectives on it um, and I can engage with it at, a, at a, a different level than when I'm reading something for the first time. And so that was the experience that I had with this. But Adrian Goldsworthy did a really magnificent job writing this. Ancient history is a weird one. I was expecting it to be a lot more about archaeology and talking about how we can dig up these remains here and then we can see that Caesar did this thing or that thing and I know sort of from from before I have known that we know quite a lot about Rome specifically because there's a lot of writing that has survived Caesar's war commentaries in particular I knew Caesar's War commentaries were a thing. I didn't realize how much detail we had from them. And it creates an interesting dynamic that I quite enjoyed in here. Um, I recently read Andrew Roberts' biography of Napoleon. Um, I've actually got that here. So, Andrew Roberts' Napoleon the Great. I think this is published under Napoleon a Life in other countries. But... It's interesting because these are two famous historical generals, basically. And, I mean, Napoleon reads Caesar's war commentaries. And that's, that's kind of where I know that Caesar has written stuff from. Um, they're two war famous generals from history. And so both of these books are fairly similar. You follow through their early life. And then, am I in focus? I don't know. You follow through their early life, and then the bulk of both of the books are about their campaigns. And in Napoleon, you can talk about the what happened on the battlefield in a lot of detail. And surprisingly, you can talk about what happened on the battlefield in a lot of detail in Caesar. Um, and at Caesar's battles, the difference is we don't know where it happened. And so there's an extra layer of detail that we get to add because we know exactly where Napoleon fought his battles. Whereas the interesting part of this was that we say, oh, we know it was in this area and it's kind of near this modern town, but we can't pinpoint exactly where it was. And so I found that dynamic of reading um, the history, if that makes sense, putting together the pieces of what happened from these sources that, I mean, it's amazing that we know so much detail about what Caesar did, almost on a day-to-day -day level, but he lived 2,000 plus years ago. That's, that's, that is incredible. Um, and it is an interesting thing to look at in terms of the difference between how we know things about modern history and 
how we have to treat things in the ancient world. Um, and I know I'm going off a little bit from Caesar here. The reason for that is that I think the story of Caesar, like I knew bro broadly the story of Caesar before reading this, um, just because he is such a massive figure in at least Western culture. So I, I know I'm not talking a lot about Caesar. I might do give a few broad strokes in a second, but the I, I also don't have that much background. I have no background to sort of pull apart how Goldsworthy treats Caesar in here. Um, but the, the interesting part to me was the historiography. Using the ancient sources who have written histories of Caesar, but they've written 200, 300, 400 years after Caesar. And how do you treat those people? Do you treat them as if they are professional historians who are like top quality academics and work on the stuff like we would treat an Andrew Roberts or an Adrian Goldsworthy, right? Like if you're if you're looking at Andrew Roberts writing about Napoleon, there's the same distance from Napoleon that some of these ancient sources that we use to learn about Caesar are from Caesar. And so I wouldn't I wouldn't instinctively question Roberts when he's writing about Napoleon, but my instinct is to question someone who is writing about Caesar in the third or fourth century. And the the interesting part of this is that Goldsworthy understands that the reader is going to be questioning that but he constructs the narrative in a way that shows that these people are historians and they are the best sources that we have and also the dynamic that we're dealing with in the ancient world is that these ancient writers have access to sources that we don't have access to and so we have to trust them in some respect because we can't actually do the amount of historical research that they can do. Caesar wrote letters and he wrote uh, several other books that haven't survived until the present. And if these other writers have access to those letters and those books, then they're going to know a lot more about Caesar than we do and we have to trust them, even though they may have biases or they they are a product of their times. I was recently listening to Dan Carlin's, so since, since starting to read this, I've, I've started listening to the podcast on the Celtic, he calls it the Celtic Holocaust. It is about Caesar's campaigns in Gaul. And at the beginning, he talks about the fact that he's recently started reading a new translation of Caesar's war commentaries. And in the beginning of, of that translation, the translator talks about why we need yet another translation of Caesar's war commentaries. Every Latin student for, for decades has translated, probably centuries, has translated Caesar's war commentaries in some form. And she says that the ancient world is so different that when we translate something like Caesar's war commentaries, we put our current world onto what is happening. And our choice of words that we translate to, the, the way we put emphasis on some things and not on other things, are going to be different depending on how the times change. And so if you have a translation from 1914 or 1915 in the middle of the First World War, you're going to translate the commentaries in a different way than you're going to translate them in 1945 and then in 1970 and then in 2010. And so he deals with that in a very, in a very interesting way. Um, he, he treats the, the sources with 
the respect that they deserve because they have access to sources that we don't have. But he notes that obviously they're going to have their biases and we can't know these things for sure. And rather than making conclusions about Caesar, we can make we, we can see what might be likely or what see, make, seems to make most sense or things like that. So that's really what I, I took away from this book. Um, it's the treatment of historical sources to learn about someone in history and how far we can get. I mean, this is a 650 page book about a guy who lived 2000 years ago. It's kind of insane. Um, the one thing that I really, really liked, and I'm just going to try to find an example in here quickly. And I wish more books would do this is they had these battlefield maps. And this battlefield map is really, it's, it's a really good one because it's not complicated. Um, and I understand the, the battles back then were a lot easier to sort of show. But even in Andrew Roberts' book, I think there were some battlefield maps in here. Okay, I found one here. This is from Andrew Roberts' Napoleon the Great, and this is the Battle of Bor Borodino. And you can see it's just difficult to get your, get your head around what's going on. Obviously, when Caesar's fighting, he's fighting with like 10, 20, 30,000 people. Um, Napoleon's fighting with more. And so you're going to have more complexity. But still, the, the battlefield maps in this were so useful. They were so easy to understand that I think it needs to be replic replicated in this style because I could understand what was going on in the battles. And I've had this issue for a while with books where I struggle to follow the flow of a battle when I'm reading it because I just... you unless you sort of have a really good map that you can reference, it's just, it's tough to get, get your head around. Um, I'll just grab another. So this is Anthony Beaver's The Second World War. And this is his 1000 page monstrosity on, on the Second World War. He basically recounts every major battle that occurred. And I'm sure he has some maps in here. So just for reference, this is published by Weidenfeld and Nicholson. Um, so you'll, you'll sort of see them on the spines as if it will stop focusing on me. W and N. Um, this book is also W and N, Weidenfeld and Nicholson. And just to give you an example of how good they are at maps, this is the, um, the Battle of Kursk in the Second World War, which is far more, it's a far bigger battle than any of the battles in uh, the Napoleonic Wars. And look at how easy that is to understand. And when you're reading through something like this, which is a thousand pages of basically battle reports, you need <laughs> some good maps to to get through that so that was a, a really good part of of this book and my camera died i hope you enjoyed the video i hope i made some sort of sense about this book if you want to read something on caesar this is a good one uh, it's only 600 and something pages so it covers everything in enough detail that you'll get the point but not so much detail that you start to fall asleep so yeah, I would highly recommend this one. Um, and all the books that I mentioned in here will be uh, down in the description. So thanks for watching. If you want to see more, please uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, like the video. It helps out the channel get to more, get to more people. So thanks for watching um, and I'll see you next time.